Hello, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I'm your host, Francie, and finally, y'all, it's happened. Volkswagen Group, which includes VW, Audi, Porsche, and Scout Motors, have committed to J3400, aka the North American Charging Standard, in future EVs starting in 2025. I am joined by my colleagues Ryan and Colton, who you often see on the Out of Spec Dealing cha- Channel, Detailing Channel. <laughs> Thanks for hopping on today. Big news, guys. What do you think? Super pumped for this. I, I think this was like the last really big domino to fall. And uh, I think this is one we've been waiting on kind of since day one, in all honesty. I'm in the same boat. I'm really excited about it. It's about time that they do it. And I can't wait to see this transition occur. All right. We're excited, guys. Love it. So a full outline of their press release so that everyone has the same information. Starting in 2025, EVs from those brands that I said will ha- will utilize the North American charging standard J3400, which is what the SAE calls it. We'll dive into that in a second. Volkswagen, Porsche, and Audi are exploring adapter solutions for their existing EVs to access the Tesla supercharger network that will also start in 2025. Scout Motors, you might be like, who's Scout Motors? Um, So those customers will be able to access the Tesla network once its vehicles go on sale. So that's that might be why you don't know about them yet. The agreement is intended to expand the customers of these brands access to the supercharger network to more than 15,000 superchargers. And it's an interesting use of language here because in other press releases, I've said yes, and or I've seen, you know, yes, our customers will have access to this many. One, I'm confused why the number changes, but we will speculate on that in a second. And then, um, of course, this is in addition to the access that they have on the Electrify America charging network, which you probably know is linked to VW in a variety of ways, diesel gate, et cetera. So they have more than 3,800 DC fast charging outlets operated by Electrify America and Electrify Canada. So they also, to remind everyone, EA announced their NACS plans that they will start to build in NACS across their network in 2025. But of course, they will continue supporting CCS. So like we said, VW has really been holding out. There are very few automakers left. And we've kind of been like, why are you waiting? I'm sure there's good reasons, but what's going on here? And Ryan, you made a point that maybe it was them waiting for the SAE to release their technical information report, TIR for short, for this standard, the J3400. So can you explain a little bit to me and our audience about what that means and why it would make sense for a VW to wait? Yeah, of course. So SAE is Society of Automotive Engineers. And They're a group and they work with standardizing and uh, developing uh, just standards for a lot of different things associated with uh, automotive stuff. So that can be aerospace, automotive, commercial transport, and they're a huge name. They have a a lot of sway and they're very significant in developing a lot of the uh, critical infrastructure agreements, all these things that uh, ensure that all these things can work together on the road. And actually, just today, SAE uh, released their technical uh, information report, like you mentioned, and that's essentially just a report outlining the J3400 North American Charging Standard, or NACS. Uh, Basically, it's just their terminology for what Tesla calls NACS. And the technical information report basically just outlines a lot of the information for what that connection is, uh, what they have to do and uh, specify as all the important critical components that are necessary to make that all work. And okay. it does make sense a little bit to wait until this is announced because this makes it very official. Uh, this will be the new, at least a new standard in the United States. Uh, so I can understand why they may want to wait for it. However, I would say it's a bit uh, conservative, cautious to uh, wait all the way until this. Mm. Uh, yeah, probably so. So, you know, Tesla came out, they called it the North American charging standard. But today with SAE coming out with this, does that mean officially it's a standard or are we still waiting on a couple of things? Do we know? I believe it is technically officially a standard now. Uh, there are a few uh, other things that they still need to do uh, as f- for that. But uh, for all intents and purposes, it's official. It is now a standard. Okay, so that's I can see why that would be a big step. Of course, you make the point, okay, but this was probably going to happen. Why wait this long? 
maybe they just, especially when EA was already doing it. That's kind of the link there. I'm kind of like, okay, whatever. But speaking of EA, Colton, you own a VW ID4. What do you think about this? Yeah, honestly, I think this is huge news and probably just saved me a ton of money because I've honestly been towing with the idea of getting rid of this car after just right over a year of ownership now. Um, yeah, our experience on EA, it has just not been great. And, you know, I own two Teslas as well. And this summer, we decided to take a quick, short road trip up to Aspen with our dogs and just go hang out for the week. And it, it was just a disaster. It was stressful taking the ID4. We wanted to take that because it has more space for the dogs, easier in and out and instead of my two Model 3s. And the whole time I was just going, I just wish I had the Tesla to drive here, or I wish we could charge on superchargers. Um, our experience was just awful. And, and I think a lot of folks experience with EA has been pretty rough as of recently. Um, I mean, I've seen things getting better and obviously there's times we roll up to an EA station and it's absolutely perfect. Uh, no complaints there. You know, we have our charging plan, which yeah, that's a whole topic of discussion other, but yeah, for me, it's a, a huge, exciting announcement. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait until 25, hopefully to see those adapters come out, see new vehicles roll out with that. I'm thinking, of course, ID4 with the actual NAX plug, ID buzz that we're going to get here eventually in the States. That'll be really cool to actually be able to go charge on a supercharger, charge reliably, and not, you know, have to have this massive headache. Yeah, I think it'll definitely change the experience for a lot of people. And now it seems to be across most automakers. We said it before, but we were kind of, you know, as one automaker after another started to announce this, it was going to be a win, not an if, that they did decide to go with the Nax J3400. So I'm glad that it's good news for you. Of course, that timeline is still a year off, but now we're closer than ever. But I feel like your experience might be similar to others where it's like, okay, this is really going to change my my lifestyle of an EV ownership where I'll be able to charge more places and really enjoy the experience more. Would you say so? Absolutely. And I mean, here in Colorado, the I-70 corridor going up to the mountains is, you know, somewhere we try to get up to. And a lot of Colorado folks do, especially in the wintertime right now, going up skiing and having, you know, rolling up to an EA station, having four stalls when Tesla, a couple miles down the road, has an eight stall and then another eight stall. It's just like, it's so frustrating. And on top of that, not having a ton of stalls, then you get into the point of, are they even up? And that's every single stall stop we did on this four hour Aspen trip. It's literally, I think under 300 miles away from our house here. And we stopped a few times. ID4 is not a very efficient vehicle. We're taking our time with the dogs and it was just a disaster. And I'm like, how is this okay? And it, to me, it's not, of course, we've harped on this forever and ever and ever. But I vowed after that trip, I will not road trip the ID4. So if the ID4 is low on charge, and my wife has to run to Denver or something, she's going to hop in the Tesla. I'm just like, nope, not dealing with it. Mm. Yeah, that's definitely the charging infrastructure is going to change after this. And every press release uh, it says that, you know, that this is a value add to our customers. It is a change in reliability and convenience and pushing that, you know, the Tesla supercharger network is distinct from the other public charging infrastructure that is out there. So I think that is the general consensus. This is the right way to go because of what we've seen unfold with the CCS network versus the Tesla supercharger network. So who remains, y'all? Who are we waiting to make the announcement? It, the, the list really has dwindled from when I started the podcast or started onto the team, starting with the podcast. Very short. Right now, the only two remaining are Stellantis and Mazda, and neither of them are really making an EV at this point. So I think uh, right. we've pretty much made the switch. Man, okay. Well, I guess it feels pretty good. So we'll see how the actual implementation with the automakers, with the other public charging networks, with the supercharger network taking on a whole new list of customers goes, and we will watch it unfold. Any Anything else y'all are excited for? Any other thoughts about this? Um, I just hope ID4 owners aren't sitting at Tesla superchargers sitting at 100%. <laughs> Fingers crossed for you. 
for everyone. Yes. Yeah, for <laughs> everybody. No, I, I think it's a, a great announcement. I'm glad to see, of course, Audi and Porsche being along with this. Um, man, that makes me want an e-tron so bad right now. Um, yeah, so I, I think it's awesome. And like I said at the beginning, I think this is the last big domino. Honestly, I expected them to kind of keep trudging water and, you know, I'm just happy they're they've finally done it i think it's a big needed step for them and you know can't wait to see this and macan ev coming out once it does that kyle was just with i mean it's truly truly awesome so i'm pumped about it what about i'm really excited about it i can't wait to see what it's like i think it's going to be tough i think it will be a challenge having all these new evs coming in the volume of evs added to the the supercharger network as well as interoperability problems potentially i i don't know think this will necessarily be the smoothest transition ever but i think that it will probably be fairly successful i'm really excited to see what it turns out being like Mm -hmm. And we'll see, you know, we've gotten, like I said, different numbers with different press releases that this automaker will access, have access to 8,000, 12,000, now 15,000 uh, superchargers. Maybe that, as Colton, you were saying, has to do with the version of the charger, V3 versus V4. I don't think we have a straight up answer on that, but we have seen discrepancies there. So uh, there's still more information to find out. But overall, VW has gone next. We can all celebrate and see what happens next. Woohoo! So thanks all y'all for tuning in to this breaking news coverage on the Out of Spec podcast. If you're enjoying it, let us know. What do you think will happen next? Otherwise, we will see you next time on the Out of Spec podcast.